again, everybody. A warm welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. We've got John here to take over Celtic versus Aberdeen on Saturday, three o'clock kickoff. We've been waiting a long time for this one, folks. It's finally here. Massive top of the league clash. Let's bring in John. How you doing, John? I'm all right, Sander. I'm all right. Looking forward to it. Oh, I very much so. It's, uh, it's been a long wait, so it's a couple of weeks. It's finally here. Top of the league class, John, against Aberdeen. It's going to be a good game, I think. And I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's, um, it's going to be a top of the league class, John. I think Aberdeen are going to give us a right good game on Saturday. Oh, well, that's what we're expecting anyway. But like I said, it's the last time I spoke to you. I watched Aberdeen the last time they played and they were absolutely absolutely ranked rotten. Um, so I'm just hoping they turn up like that the more. Because if they do, they will get scalped. Yeah. Um looking at the the injury concerns for the score, we're gonna get into it obviously the team news a wee bit later, but everybody came back fit and healthy, I think, from the international break. So that's good news, I suppose. Um but before we get into that, let's get into the housekeeping first. Hit like button, please hit that like button because um you know they've been a wee bit static for a while. But I treat to try and see that going up a wee bit. So hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button as well, please, and your notification bell. Um, hit the F3 for us, that would be much appreciated. The competition this week, for the competition this week, is a correct score and an anytime goal scorer. So the correct score and an anytime goal scorer for Aberdeen or Celtic, doesn't matter. One guess each into the comments, and it's to win the Freddie Mercury Celtic supporter framed print. Um, uh, so that's what's up for grabs this week. That's from Karen over at the, the Facebook. She she sent us that over. She's allowed me to use it. I'm going to print it off and put it in a frame. So uh, good luck, everybody, with that. That's a competition for Saturday. Correct score. Get it into the comments section, folks. And uh, obviously, if there's more than one correct entry, that will have to go to a prize draw. Right, that wraps that up, John. That gets the housekeeping out the road. Um, let's get right into it then, John. TV blackout for this one. It's not on Sky. I mean, this this was unbelievable when I heard this. You know, you've got Sky Sports showing a team in third against a team in ninth, John. Rangers against Kamarnock on Sunday. Uh, the, the Sky have already showed home games for Celtic this season, John. So I don't understand why uh, either one of these TV channels kind of show, you know, this massive top of the league clash. Uh, but they've decided to show... Rangers against Kamarnock, third against ninth, ninth John. It's, what do you think of that? Ah, it's pretty poor, isn't it? But it is what it is. That's sky for you. Um, I don't think it's shown any favouritism to uh, uh, Rangers. It's just, it seems to always be away clashes that they show. When it comes to Celtic and Rangers, it's always the away clashes that they show. But they have been known to show uh, Rangers home games in the past, but this season as well, I think. Yeah, they've already showed Rangers home games. You're bang on, and this is top of the league, John. They could have they could have squeezed this one in definitely, <laughs> but they didn't. So um, we have to try and find some other way. Obviously, the highlights are going to be on BBC, but I've heard the game isn't on Celtic TV either, John. But what I am hearing through the the dark website <laughs> is that Aberdeen TV are showing it outside of the UK, John. So anybody that's not getting to the game, just do a wee bit of digging, in, and I'm sure you'll get the game somewhere. Uh, you should get it somewhere, I. Uh, I'm surprised it was, it's no one Celtic TV. They show every game normally, so I'm surprised with that. Yeah, I think it'll be on outside of the UK as well, John. But um, I know for a guarantee that Aberdeen TV are shown outside the UK, so that means you'll get it on the internet somewhere, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was quite bad, you know, First against second, both teams unbeaten in the league. A massive clash. It's going to be a great game. And Sky decide. I mean, they knew this weeks ago, John. They knew this game was coming up weeks ago. So they could easily have put this one on Sky Sports. Uh, but they didn't. So we move on. We bits of news before we get into the big preview, John. The SPL are thinking about banning orders for supporters that bring pyros and fireworks into the stadiums. Um, Celtic have obviously been hit with this UEFA fine as well for the, the pyro display um, a couple of weeks ago. So a fine for Celtic and the, the SPFL are looking at uh, banning orders for supporters. John, what do you think of that? I think they should be looking at the cup final when Rangers fans were firing rockets into the Celtic fans. I think they should look at that before they start looking at a, a smoke bomb. Yeah, yeah, I think 
it's an overall thing that they're looking at, John. Anything, anybody brings fireworks into stadiums, then they're looking at their ten-year bans, you know. But um, yeah, you're right, John. This should have been this should have been, you know, thought about a long, long time ago. Now, this we have spoke about this fireworks thing in length, haven't we? Um, for over a year now, actually, we just want to see it stop. We don't we don't want it. It's not needed. And I think the the clubs and the the SPFL are actually you now going to be, you know, maybe some action on this, John, possibly some action on uh, banning supporters that bring them into the, the stadium. I don't think they, they should be banning supporters for, you know, something trivial like that. But, you know, just an outright ban throughout Scottish football, I'd be quite happy with that. Aye, uh, it does. It ruins the game. I mean, I like the, the pyros and all that, but it kind of kills the game at kickoff, especially sometimes when it's big games at Hamden or games at Celtic Park against Rangers. Uh, you can't see the game. The kickoff gets delayed because they can't see for the smoke, all that stuff. But you know, I like it. I do like that. I like the smoke. It adds an atmosphere to the game. I think that the smoke. But uh, I, I think it's time for an all-round ban. On to be honest with you, you can't just ban one club. You've got to. Uh, you've got to. Just go right through the whole league. There's a ban on pyros, any kind of pyros, be it smoke bombs or flares or anything. They're banned. If your club's uh, seen letting them off, uh, you get a fine. I think that's the right thing to do, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, you're right, John. It does bring an atmosphere, and I do like it as well. But, you know, when the clubs begin to get fines from UEFA, you know, that's that's money that can be better spent elsewhere, isn't it? And it seems that it happens every year, isn't it? We get these fines in the in Europe or Champions League, whatever. Um, so Brendan Rogers, he's come out as well, John. He's not happy with these fireworks and smoke bombs, etc., being brought into the stadium. So even the manager wants to see a change. Aye. <laughs> Every time you stop short, I always get caught drinking. Um, aye, I, th- I think it's right. Uh, Brendan's come out and says that as well. I, I, I do like them, don't get me wrong. I do like the look at it, but... Uh, but especially fireworks, they should be banned for any ground. You know, rockets that fly across the crowd and all that, they should be banned at any cost. Ban them all together. Smoke bombs, maybe not so much, but they, they can delay kickoff. So I don't like that because of the delayed kickoff. But other than that, I like the smoke. But the flares, I, I think they should be banned as well. Flares and fireworks, keeping them away from football grounds, there's no need for it. Yep, okay. Right, we'll, we'll leave that there. Let's get into Aidan McGeady's retirement. Good luck to Aidan and his retirement. He was th- 38, John. You know, that's, uh, that's a fair old age to be playing to, isn't it? So good luck to Aidan McGeady and his retirement. Uh, an outstanding player for Celtic, Aidan. I liked him a lot. Over 230 appearances for Celtic as well. Uh, yeah, just a, a great wee talent. Scored a lot of goals, a lot of assists, uh, and a good wee guy as well. But uh, that's Aidan hung up the boots, John. Good luck to Aidan McGeady. Aye, good luck to Aidan, aye. Um, I wouldn't put him in the Celtic legends bracket, but he was a cracking wee player, Aidan McGeady at Celtic. Mm-hmm. Uh, aye, look, good luck to the boy. All the best to him. All the best for his future. Uh, he might get a job as, as a pundit, I think. I think I've seen him, seen Aidan McGeady as a pundit before. Am I right in thinking that? I'm sure I've seen him, uh, can't remember where, but I've definitely seen him on somewhere as, as a pundit. Yeah, he's been in a few of the you know, the, the pundits. It could be Sky, John, it could be Premier Sports, could be BBC. I've seen him a few times on the TV, yeah, so that's maybe the route he's going to go down. Uh, played for a few clubs, clubs as well, Aidan, didn't he? He was over at Russia, he was played down in England, he's played up here, obviously, he's been all over the place, so um, maybe, you know, you never know, he might have his, his wee try at management, John, possibly. Well, I don't know, Arthur. I don't know much about Aidan McGeady after he left Celtic. I know he went to Russia and he had a wee, a wee stint in the Championship doing in England as well. But I don't really know much about what he, what he does. I've seen him on Sky, I think. Uh, but I look good luck to Aidan if he decides to go down that route. I've never heard him speaking about that. So uh, we'll wait and see. But all we can say is good luck. Yeah, good luck, Aidan. All the best in your future. Uh, I, I liked him at Celtic. He, was, he, he broke through... And uh, you remember the, the grief he got because he he chose Ireland over Scotland. That was unbelievable as well, wasn't it? You know, he, he's a boy's Irish, you know. So I know he's born in Scotland, but he's got Irish grandparents. So he decided to play for Ireland, and they got a lot of stick up here for that, John. 
every guy that's born in Scotland and plays for Ireland gets a lot of stick. Mikey Johnson as well. I know I watched Ireland the other week there and Mikey was playing for Ireland. So aye, I think any player born in Scotland that decides to uh, choose Ireland gets a lot of stick up here. But uh, that, that's life, isn't it? That's a uh, wee bit of sectarianism there, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, it looks that way, doesn't it? Um, but he stuck to his guns and he did well for Ireland as well. A lot of appearances for Ireland, a lot of goals as well. So, all right, John, that's it. That wraps up, Aidan. Good luck to uh, Aidan McGiddy. All right, John, let's get into the big preview of the game we've all been waiting for. International break is over. By the way, I think there's another international break, break in mid-November as well. So there's only three or four weeks to the next one. So, you know, this looks as though we're going to get quite a few of these international breaks this season. But anyway, let's get into the big preview. Nick Walsh, he's the referee for this one. Greg Aitken, he's on the VAR. So that's uh, that's your referees and officials for the game. There's no point in mentioning the linesmen because they don't do anything anyway. <laughs> so um, Carl Vickers looks as though he's fit for this one. John Greg Taylor possibly still out with this one. So um, Alex Valley looks as though he's got another chance um, from the start against Aberdeen. Aye, Greg's uh, still no fit, is he? That's bad, isn't it? Um, yeah. He's still got a lot to prove, Alex Valley, but I just hope he turns up. He knows, I hope he knows, I'm sure he does know it's a top of the league clash, so he'll be okay, I think. He'll handle that quite well. Yeah, I, I think he's okay. I think he's, you're, going to, you're going to see a player in this boy, Alex Valley, John. He's, these players don't sign for Barcelona, you know, um, if they're not a decent uh, player um, and the more game time he gets the more he'll improve as well I think John so that's it team news wise uh, everything but everybody else seems okay uh, only, only Aberdeen doubt is uh, Paul Vara he's, he's out he's definitely out so uh, one injury concern for them and everybody else is fit for Aberdeen as well so it looks as though it's more or less two full squads um, for the managers to pick from uh, let's have a wee touch on Angles and either John, I wanted to have a wee quick word on them before we go any further. Um, this is a game where both Ida and Angles can uh, prove their big, you know, fees, John, 11 million and 9 million. Uh, we just need a wee bit more from both of these lads, and I'm sure we'll get more as the season goes on. But why not start here against Aberdeen? Uh, outstanding performance from Angles on Saturday, and maybe a goal or two from Big Adam Ida. Uh, I, I don't think Adam Ida's going to start, mind you, but um. I we need big performances uh, from them. Them two, big signings, big money signings, nine million for Ida, eleven million for Engels. That's twenty million quid's worth of talent now. Uh they should be proving they're worth in Scotland, Sander, when you're paying that kind of money. But sometimes that doesn't happen. I've have not seen I don't think we've seen the best at Engels or Ida yet. We all like Ida. I think he's a good big striker. Uh, he's already bagged a few goals this season, Adam Eder as well. So um I don't think he's going to start. I think Hugo's going to start, uh, but Engels is, uh, he's got a lot to prove. Uh, he's still not really um, overly impressed me that much. Although he's a decent player, I've seen decent spells from him, he's not impressed me that much. Yeah, you can see he's a player, John. You can see it. You've seen it in, in you know, spells. Maybe he's just taking a wee bit of extra time to settle in. Um, but that'll come eventually. But you can see he's got the, the quality and the talent. So, yeah, um, Aberdeen is, uh, is a game where he can show off his talents, John, and that's what we're all hoping for, isn't it? Uh, okay, both teams, John, are coming out of this one. Seven wins out of seven. Unbeaten, both teams, in the Cup and the League. So, obviously, we faced them in a couple of weeks in the semi-final as well, but um, we'll not talk about that just now. But um, how do you see this one? Go? I know we're no Mystic Meg. We don't know how it's going to go, but how do you think Aberdeen are going to come at into this game, John, they're going to attack, attack, you know, go for the throat, go for the jugular, or will they be a wee bit more reserved, sit back, um, try and hit Celtic on the counter attack, you know, like every other SPL club does at Celtic Park. What's your personal thoughts, John? How do you think this one's going to pan out? Well, having watched Aberdeen's uh, games this season, I've seen a lot of Aberdeen games this season, and they don't stick to a regimented system, really. They chop and change the way they play in different games, so it's hard to say with Aberdeen. Um, I think what they'll do is no, not what they normally do. Look for uh, long balls, corner kicks, long throw-ins, that kind of thing. 
and I think they'll try and close the Celtic players down at the halfway line mark and try and counter from there. Uh, mm-hmm. Just like Ross County did, basically, their, their high press, it wasn't that high a press, it was, they were pressing at the halfway line, really. No gain Celtic a chance to get forward. So I think Aberdeen will be similar and they'll rely on all the things that I say is free kicks, punt them into the box, corner kicks and long throw-ins. They're no a flair team, Aberdeen. Although they're a good team, they're no a flair team with loads of uh, attacking ability. I don't see much difference for Aberdeen the way, the way that they've always played. They've always played that way. They just look a wee bit better at it, to be honest with you. Uh, but look, they're a half-decent team and we'll need to be on our guard for the, the counter-attacks, I think, because they've got a lot of pace. Right, so they've got a lot of pace. You have no so Aberdeen this season, John, so I, I don't know. I've only gone by what I've heard and what you say about them. So, um, yeah, I think I think they're going to try and come at us. But, you know, Celtic are going to go at them as well, aren't they? So it, uh, it does make for an exciting game. And maybe an NTN, one of these NTN games, could be one of these high-scoring games as well. So um, it's just one to look forward to. It really is. Uh, let's, let's go through what the bookmakers think of the chances for both Celtic and Aberdeen. I'm not going to do a full betting side on this, just, just the odds on an outright winner. Celtic 1-4, to four. Celtic hot favourites there. The draw is 5-1, to one. and an Aberdeen win, Aberdeen come out of Celtic Park with a win, is priced at 10-1, to one, John. So the bookies are not really giving them much of a chance, are they? No, but uh, look, Aberdeen, they're going to be a confident team. We all these ones winning breeds confidence, right? We all know that winning definitely breeds confidence, and Aberdeen are going to be really confident because they haven't lost a game. But it's the big stage, they're coming to Celtic Park, the home of the champions, 60,000 fans. How are they going to cope with that? I don't know, maybe they've seen some weaknesses in Celtic, like Ross County did, you know, closing down on the halfway line. I think that system really worked for a Scottish team, closing down at the halfway line. Maybe Aberdeen will try that. I don't really know. They've got a lot of decent players there. You say Pulvara's Pal- injured, eh? Yeah, he's out, John. Yeah. So they've got uh, Sockler, obviously, striker. He's a good striker. Uh, mm. Shaden Morris, another good wee player. Uh, they've got a lot of good players. Uh, what's the boy that plays on the wing? I can't remember his name. Bissagen or something like Vincente Bissagen, I think his name is. Yeah. Uh, James McGarry. Papa Guy, Duke, of course, always comes on as a sub these days. Yeah, she's still he, there. She's still, he's Aberdeen. still there. He, he tends to come on as a sub because uh, I've watched all the Aberdeen's games this season. Uh, also, Clarkson as well, I think, is a half decent player. He's good at going forward, a lot of pace as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Kevin Nisbet, uh, who else is there at Aberdeen? Jamie McGrath, Irish boy. And. Yep. Uh, Nielsen, that's a big strong player that they signed from Norway. Nielsen, he's a good player, so that's one worth watching. Big, strong, physical uh, player that plays in the midfield. Who else is there? Shinny, of course, the captain. I like Graham Shinny, a half decent, solid wee player. Uh, yeah. Mackenzie, Nicky Devlin, who just got his Scotland debut the other night there as well. And their goalkeeper's decent as well. Uh, Meethoff. So, aye, they've got a lot of decent players under. Yeah, yeah, a good bit of homework there, John, on Aberdeen because as I say, as I say I've not watched them, so I've not watched a single minute of Aberdeen this season. So that's that's another reason why I'm looking forward to the game on Saturday because it's my first chance to see what all the fuss is about, to be honest with you. So uh, yeah, it's it makes it makes for a brilliant game, right? Rangers, sorry, Aberdeen. You know they failed to win in the last twenty five attempts against Celtic, John. So no wins in the last twenty five attempts, and they've also lost. 34 of the last 36 visits to Celtic Park. So, uh, looking at the history of the fixture, John, uh, it doesn't it doesn't bode well for Aberdeen. And looking at the odds as well, that also doesn't bode well for Aberdeen. But you've got to put all that aside, John, and look at the form of both the teams, both the clubs, uh, both flying high, clear at the top of the league. So, I mean, what a chance to put a massive marker down on the league table for Celtic. It sure is. It's a bad game for Carter Vickers sticking back to the top of the league clash. Um, but we'll get to the lineups in a minute, I'm sure. But uh, look, Celtic's got a, a ton of 
really, really good players as well there. Nicholas Kuhn, Kyogo, Dyson Maeda, of course, Hitati McGregor. So Celtic's got a very strong team. Aberdeen have got a, a team of players that's a mixture of strength and pace. Like I say, I've watched all of Aberdeen's games this season. I've been quite impressed with them. They're a good team. But personally speaking, I don't think they're good enough to beat Celtic. No judging by last week's performance against Hearts. I thought they were absolutely, absolutely abysmal against Hearts. Hearts should have really uh, took three or four off of them. But the ten men was the thing that hampered them. So uh, if it wasn't for that, Aberdeen would uh, I think they'd been looking at a defeat last week. Yeah. Yeah, they were lucky Aberdeen for what I read. But uh, what about, do you think there's a chance, Brendan, we'll get through the lineups in a couple of minutes, but do you think there's a chance Brendan will rest Vickers for the Atalanta game, John, and bring it in uh, trusty for this one? Do you think there's a chance that could happen? Because as you say, it's a, it's a very tough game to throw Carter Vickers in, or do you think you'll just uh, bite the bullet and just put him straight in at the centre centre back position, John? Well, look, you've got to give him a chance to get ready for the Atalanta game. He's got to get some kind of game time in his leg before that. No, his leg, he's got more than one leg. <laughs> but he's got to get uh, a bit of game time in his <laughs> legs. Right. Hey John, what's your, what's your prediction for the lineup then? My prediction for the lineup is uh, Schmeichel, Vickers, Scales, uh, Valley. Johnston, McGregor, Hitati, Engels, Kyogo, Maeda, and Kuhn. So I'll quickly run through my prediction lineup, John. Uh, it's more or less the same as yours. I'll go with Schmeichel and goal. I'm going to go with Johnston and Alex Valley. The centre backs will be Carter Vickers. I think he'll start with Scales, uh, Callum McGregor, Paolo Bernardo, Engels. Ties and Mida, Kyogo and Nicholas Kuhn, John. So just more or less the same as what you were saying. I don't think there'll be a place on the start lineup for big Adam Mida uh, or Hitati for that matter. I think Hitati will start. Uh, we'll wait and go. We'll know. We can't tell the future. We're no profits here. But uh, I, I think Hitati will start. Uh, just for the simple fact, he's easy on the eye. He's. Uh, I don't mean that in a sense that he's attractive. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's easy to watch when he's on the ball, basically. He's, he's so calm and collected most of the time, and he can pick the passes, the chips into the box and stuff. Uh, so I think Hattati's a better player than Paolo Bernardo, and I think Brendan's going to start with the strongest possible team. Yeah, he's going to go for the strongest. Uh, but, you know, Bernardo, he is on form as well, isn't he? But as you say, we're no mind readers. We're only like given what we think is going to happen. Uh, uh, <laughs> we might be totally wrong. It might be Bernardo and Hattati that starts. We just don't know. But um, we'll wait and see what happens on Saturday. Right, John, this is a prediction then. Score prediction time. This is... Uh, it's going to be tough because I think there's a lot of goals in this one. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that's what my prediction is going to be. So, what are you thinking, John? What's your score prediction? Uh, I think it's going to be pretty close. I'm going to say 2 1 Celtic. Mm, yeah, there's, there's a few who said that. Um, I'm going to say 2 0 Celtic. That was, I, I've been thinking that all week 2 0. I don't know why, it just it's in my head. So, yeah, I'm going to go for the 2 nothing. Either way, John, it's the, the three points, you know. Um, and do you want to know something, John? And I know Celtic supporters don't want to hear it, but a draw wouldn't be the end of the world either for me, although that's the last thing in the world that I want, but it wouldn't be the end of the world if we came out of there with a draw either, to be honest with you. But uh, what would you think of that? What would your thoughts be if we came out of there with a draw? Obviously, I'd be uh, disappointed, but I don't think that's going to happen. There's every possibility it could happen. I'm no, I'm no kidding ourselves here. I've watched Aberdeen. They're a decent team. But if they turn up the way they played the last time they played against Hearts, if they play like that, they'll get an absolute scalping, Zander. That'll be 6 nothing if they turn up and play like that. Um, we we'll just need to wait and see what Aberdeen turns up. And obviously we'll need to see what Celtic turns up as well. 
Yeah, yeah, that's it, John. Uh, no, no, you know, that's worst case scenario. <laughs> worst case scenario, a draw. That's what I'm saying, John. That's uh, nobody's wanting a draw here. It's got to be it's got to be one hundred percent a Celtic win on Saturday. That's that's the bottom line, isn't it? Uh all right, John, that wraps up the, our, our preview for the Aberdeen game. Um, what, what, what's your, your thoughts then? Have you any more thoughts about it? That I've maybe missed stuff out or anything you want, anything else you want to say about the game Saturday? Uh, I think I think it could be a midfield battle as well because they've got a couple of tough fighting players in there. I've quite a few of them, actually. But the ones that stand out for me in the midfield is uh, Nielsen. He's a good player. He's, he's solid. He doesn't let anything get past him. And uh, Graham Shinney as well, of course, they too. I think uh, they kind of control the midfield for Aberdeen. So it could be a, a mid, bit of a midfield battle. It could turn out to be that type of game. Uh, just need to wait to see if, if Aberdeen have got the, the bottle. That's what it comes down to when it comes to the league, you know. If Aberdeen going to win this game, that will give them every confidence to go in and challenge for the title. I'm not saying they're going to win the league, but that'll be a big boost for them. And I've got Rangers coming up as well soon, which is uh, going to be another tough game for Rangers, of course. But I I think Celtic will be up for it. I think they'll know what they've got to do to beat Aberdeen. Celtic players are pretty confident. I just hope that Borussia Dortmund result never put a dent in their confidence. I think it did a wee bit against Ross County, but I think we should be okay. I think it'll be a narrow win for Celtic. And if Aberdeen play the way they played against Hearts, it'll be a scalping for Aberdeen. That's the two results I'm looking at. And if Aberdeen turn up and play the way they can play, which I've seen them play well this season, they could possibly leave Celtic Park with a draw. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks for that, John. That's it. We'll, we'll leave that there. Good luck to Celtic on Saturday. No longer kick off, is it? It's no longer at all. So, uh, it's... Um, Rain, rain predicted, John. So it's going to be a wet, slick surface. It's what Celtic like. So, um, yeah, it's just going to be a brilliant game. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, three points. I think Celtic will turn up, John. I agree with you. I think we'll turn up. I think we'll, we'll win the game. It won't be a four or a five, John, but you never know. It could be. It could be. It depends what mid Celtic are in, doesn't it? So, um, as I say, we'll leave that there. Let's run through some. Fixtures, upcoming fixtures uh, to note in your diaries, folks. Um, so we've got uh, Celtic ladies against Spartans on Sunday, John, so the ladies can maybe bounce back after two defeats. Uh, aye, the Spartans, aye. Uh, that, you'd fully expect uh, Celtic ladies to win that one, wouldn't you? But their, their confidence will have taken a big hit after that result against Real Madrid the other night. Yeah, yeah, that's the confidence was quite low anyway, wasn't it? You have to get beat with hearts as well. So uh, it's a chance to bounce back for the ladies anyway. So good luck to them. Celtic B are away to Brave Braves, never heard of them, but they play Braves anyway. Celtic B, uh, so good luck to the Celtic B lads as well. Um, and a wee quick, a wee just a, just a wee look at Atalanta, John. They're away to uh, Ven Venezia on Sunday, John. So um, they don't get any extra days rest either. In fact, they've got a day's less rest, if you like. So Atalanta, they're away to Venezia um, in Italy. So um, we'll keep a wee close eye on that one. Uh, uh, we've got predictions, John, for the SPL fixtures over the weekend. We always like to do this. We get quite a few right. Well, we get most of the... We don't get the results right, but we get the... The, uh, the, the final outcome. Right? Yeah, uh. the winners, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we like to do this. Let's quickly run through this. Dundee United against Hibs. Uh, Dundee United are no great right now. I'm going to go for a... Hibs no great either, of course. I'm going to say two each in that one. Yeah, 2-1 for Dundee United for me there, John. Hearts against St Mirren? Uh, St Mirren... Hearts played quite well against Aberdeen, mind you. Um, I'm going to go for a St Mirren narrow win. 1-0. Well, I'll say 1-0 Hearts. Um... Motherwell against Dundee. 3 0, Motherwell. 3 0. I'll say 2 1, Motherwell. And we've got St Johnston against Ross County, John. Uh, Ross County, I don't know. Played well against Celtic. 
they'll feel hard done by a wee bit, I think. Uh, but I'm going to say one each. You know, I was going to say one each as well. In fact, I'm going to stick with one each, John. I think it'll be one each as well. And on Sunday, third against ninth, you know, what a fixture. Come on against Rangers, John, what do you think? I'm thinking two each. Oh, that'd be good. Take that. Take that right now. <laughs> um, uh, three one to Rangers. Okay, I've took a wee note of every one of them, John, and if I've got the time, we'll run through them on the post-match after the Aberdeen game. All right, John. Okay. Ah, well, the, no, the nerves, but the excitement is beginning to grow for this one. We're just a few hours away from kick-off, aren't we? So uh, I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. It's been, it's been a long time, John. Ross County was a long time ago, um, and we finally get this game um, up and running in a, in a few hours, John. So uh, it's... it's, it's uh, if, if, we, if we win it, John, let's put it this way. If we win this, I think I know it's early, but I think more or less it's the titles in the bag. A bit early to be saying that, I think. Is that delay back again? Um, don't think so, John. It seems okay. Uh, there seems a couple of seconds uh, delay to me. Uh, aye, the game's in the bag. Uh, uh, the game's the game's in the bag. I was going to say, you say the league's in the bag, but I don't think it is. There's a long, long way to go. That's only eight games played. But uh, it's certainly a big confidence booster, that one. Um, Aberdeen, obviously, their spirits are really high right now. So they're going to come in there with belief that they can get something. So we've got to be wary of that. I'm sure everybody at Celtic's wary of that. But aye, I, th I think Celtic's going to prove just too strong for them. But I don't think the league's over, even if we win this one, Xander. Hell of a long way to go. Yeah, I think the league's in the bag before we play on Saturday. <laughs> anyway, that's just my personal opinion. Anyway, John, let's get into the comments then. Um... First up is uh, Paul McComb. Paul says, bring on the sheep. Let's have it. Hail, hail. Bring on the sheep, yeah. Yeah, you have no good long to wait, Paul. The sheep will be here very soon, kicking off against the champions. Uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, this game's been built up, John Hunter. It's been built up on the, in the press. It's been built up online. It's it's everywhere. I think just I think everybody's just happy to see the you know the domestic football, the real football return. Aye, aye. Well, after watching Scotland, that's uh, that game against Portugal. Just uh, this Portugal. I think it made the Scotland players dizzy after that. So hope there's no players suffering from dizzy spells after that game. Um. Aye, Scotland snooze fest, absolute snooze fest. Um, I bring on the sheep, as Paul says, let them have it. I, I totally agree. Yeah, let them have it. A uh, nice early goal would uh, settle everybody down, especially the players. Uh, so that that would be a bonus. We get a nice wee early goal. A wee a wee shot for McGregor for about twenty five yards. So I'll, I'll take that. Roy of the Rover stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Make anybody's capable of doing it. It's our Callum, isn't it, John? Aye. Well, if Aberdeen open up the Mora, aye, they'll the leave their self exposed a wee bit as well. So they'll be wary of that. So, aye. Yeah, they're playing against Celtic. There's no mugs that they're playing here. So, aye. If they attack the way they have been attacking against all the other teams, they'll get exposed. So, aye, they'll be a bit more defensive, I think. Hmm. Okay, look. Who's up next? We would never sell a club. Thanks for that, Paul. Cheers, Paul. Uh, we would never sell a club, says... Hate these meaningless international breaks, but it came at the right time for Celtic when performances were dipping a bit and it's back to business again with a tricky home game with Aberdeen and Rodgers will have a plan in place to stifle Atalanta in the next Champions League game. Yeah, I'll jump a wee bit far ahead, didn't we, there? So, um, let's talk about stifling Atalanta when we put Aberdeen, after we put Aberdeen to bed. That's where I would look at that. Uh, we're not even going to go into that, you know, John. That's that's for the post match after Aberdeen. We can then touch on that game on Wednesday night. So uh, yeah, he could have a plan. He could have a plan. We don't know. We'll wait and see what happens on uh, Saturday, John, first, and then we'll take Atalanta after the Aberdeen game. That's the way I look at it. That's the way I look at it anyway. Exactly. I one game at a time. That's all we can do. But uh, we can talk about what we would never sell. Our club says about uh, the Aberdeen game. I don't want to talk about Atalanta until. 
the game is upon us, to be honest with you. But uh, aye, meaningless international breaks. I agree with that. I th- it just gets on my nerves now that um, Celtic's performance is uh, dipping. You think Celtic's had a dip in performance? I know, obviously, the Borussia Dortmund game was a scalping, but uh, I think there maybe a wee bit of a dip in performance. I think Ross County were right up for it. We would never sell a club. But I, I don't think there was a really a big dip in the performance. I just think Ross County were really good. Yeah, just ask Rangers about Ross County. At the end of last season, just a few months ago, John, uh, Ross County beating them up at Dingwall. So that's a tough place to go. We go with the result. That was the main thing. But there is the, the, this happens every year, John, when we play these big teams in the Champions League. The, the, doesn't it? Uh, every time we play a Barcelona, a Real Madrid, a whoever it is, PSG, you know, we get these heavy defeats and then come back to a sort of stuttering performance. It happens every single year. So we're sort of a used to it. We've had a two-week break, like we would never sell a club says. Uh, and hopefully the players will be refreshed and looking forward to this one. Aye, I think they've all be ready for it. They've all be refreshed. Uh, some of the French players obviously had a, a wee shot in the, fr- the friendly against Sligo Rovers. I says it was Anthony Ralston. It wasn't Anthony Ralston that played in that game. It was, uh, what do you call him? Yang was the other one that played. No Ralston. There was four mm-hmm. French players played and it, the other one was Yang. So it was Yang, Stephen Welsh, Scott Bain and Palmer. <laughs> yeah. You know, you might see a wee, you know, fleeting appearance from Palmer, maybe with 10 minutes to go on Saturday, John. Depending on what the score is as well, doesn't it? So, uh, Maida, we want to see Maida flying up and down the line, like he always does. We want to see Maida uh, turn Aberdeen to shreds, to be honest with you, John. We want to see Kuhn doing what we know he can do. He's scored a couple against Aberdeen already, so he likes to find the net against Aberdeen. Uh, and Kyogo obviously up front. Uh, we want the wee man firing on all cylinders. So good comment there from we would never sell a club for a pound. Thanks, Paul. Aye. I've just I was just thinking about the Aberdeen game. Celtic will look at the Aberdeen game as a big game. It's a top of the league clash. Celtic are a big team kind of game. They like the big games against Rangers and that. So they'll look at this game. Closest rivals are Aberdeen. We can they shift them off our heels. What a big game players at Celtic, so I think Celtic will look at that as a big game. So, I the Celtic players will be right up for it. Mm. Of course, they will, John. It's uh, you know, the Borussia Dortmund was a long time ago. I know I, I've just brought it back up again, but that was a long time ago. The players will be back to their usual selves, John. So, uh, I don't think we've got anything to worry about on Saturday, to be honest with you. Aye, well, let's move on. Thanks for that. Anyway, next up was uh, Roseanne, who says, still praying for Lisbon, girl. God bless your stepdad. He's been through enough. Yeah, that's it. I've not heard anything more from Lisbon, girl, so hopefully everything's okay at her side of things. And uh, her stepdad is uh, coming through his uh, hospital treatment, John. Aye, all the best to uh, Lisbon, girls. Stepdad, of course, all the best, Lisbon girl. I yep. hope he's uh, pulling through, making a good recovery. Yeah, good recovery, and this be the recovery power. That's what we're all hoping for. All the best, Lisbon girl. And Roseanne was up again. She says, uh, hi, guys. Great to have you back. Looking forward to Saturday. I'm going to go for 3-1 and scales to score. I know Scotland are rubbish, but I have to say I enjoyed the game on Tuesday. I had a feeling they might get a wee point roll on Saturday. I thought the game was an absolute snooze fest. Try to watch Scott Scotland struggling against a uh, forty-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo. That's just embarrassing. Uh, but by the way, talking about forty-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo walking off the park, no shaking players' hands and all that. What's that all about? This guy's supposed to be a role model for wee kids walking past players, no shaking their hands and all that. That's just disgusting behaviour. Yeah, that's it. We spoiled brat, isn't he? Um, but, you know, he's role model, I don't know. I don't know where people get that for but because he scores a few goals. Yeah, role model maybe, but, you know, very moody player. Same as the other one, John. This wee Brazilian guy, I can't remember his name. The guy who plays for Brazil. Another wee moody guy, played against Celtic Moody when he shook hands. Um, yeah, yeah, it's 
all these role models are all the same as far as I'm concerned, John. And for a 40-year-old Ronaldo to walk off the park and no shake any Scotland players' hands, to me, it's absolutely disgusting. I oh, it disgusted me. Uh, I think he shook Ralston's hand and then walked half, never shook anybody else's hand. He was walking up the, the tunnel. Players were putting their hand out and he was just walking past them, brushing past them. I just think that. I just think it's disgusting, to be honest with you, Xander. There's absolutely no need for that. Uh, I've never liked Ronaldo. I'll be honest with you, I've never liked him. Um, we uh, Cliff Richard look alike. Don't like him. Just... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It's just, I've never liked that type of player. You know, these world-known players on Netflix, they had his wee movie, Cristiano. Who cares? You're a football player, mate. Get over yourself. Yeah, that's it. There, there was Neymar, wasn't he? He was the exact same at Celtic Park. Uh, although, also, that was hand in there, right? but he was the same at Celtic Park when they shake hands, falling about, diving all over the place. Supposed to be this you know, role model superstar. He ain't, he ain't no role model either, John. Uh but yeah, yeah, that's it, John. Making videos, making, making movies about yourself. It's a little coming to you. Christiano, the movie. I wonder how many people actually watched that utter garbage. Oh, I don't know if it's utter garbage. I never watched it myself, but i seen it. And I was thinking, I remember thinking, why would anybody want to watch that? That's right up there yeah. by watching stuff about the royal family for me. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty poor, isn't it? Uh, but it would surprise you, the people that would watch that, John, uh, the, to be honest with you. Um, Anyway, Scotland, John, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's dire times, and dire times for the national team. Uh, it's a decent result, don't get me wrong, Roseanne's right, it's a decent one each draw. You, you know, if, if we were anywhere near it in, in this Nations League, a one each draw would have been a good result, but to get a one each draw after defeat, after defeat, then it's, it's a bit meaningless as far as I'm concerned. I propping up the table, very good. Um and Roseanne thinks it's going to be 3-1 to Celtic against Aberdeen and skills to score. Would you think the chances of that are Xander 3-1 to Celtic? Roseanne's normally quite good at the old predictions. Yeah, 3-1 to Celtic. Yeah, very possible. Skills to score, also possible. He's just scored for Ireland a couple of weeks ago, didn't he? Less than two weeks ago. So, yeah, he knows where the night is, skillsy. Uh, he's always up there with the corner kicks. He's There's, there's every chance skills can get score a goal any time in the game. Ah. Uh. Big fish boy. Big skills, yeah. I think Roseanne wants the Freddie Mercury prize. <laughs> I love Freddie Mercury. What a singer he was, Zander. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it was just a, it's just I thought it was it was unusual. It was an unusual prize to give away, you know, Freddie Mercury in a Celtic top. <laughs> I, I think the nearest Freddie Mercury got to Celtics when he met Billy Conley, of course, a big big Celtic fan, the big one. Yeah, close friends, uh, both of them, weren't they? Um, Mercury and uh, the big one, Billy Connolly. Yeah, as, as you say, John, that's probably the closest they ever came to, you know, even knowing about Celtic, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, uh, but it was nicely put together. It was a nice it was a nice picture, John. She'd done well. She spent time on it and uh, she allowed me to, to use it. So that's fair enough, I suppose. Aye, that's fair enough. Anyway, let's move on. Thanks for that, Roseanne. Yeah, cheers, mm. Roseanne. Keep the comments coming in, pal. I know there's a wee delay in the, in the stream here, Xander, so uh, just be wary of that. There's a, like a three-second delay, so here I'll go. I'm going to read out this next one. Colin Stewart says, Thanks once again for all the comments. My family and friends said it was lovely, Xander and John. Hail, hail. That's from Collins, uh, who sadly lost his lovely wife, Michelle. Yeah, that's right, John. Uh, it's good to hear uh, Collins still on the the comments there, John. Um, I just I just feel for, for the lads, you know, losing his friend, his missus, you know, it's 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 just tragic. Uh, and our thoughts are still with you, Collins. So uh, keep in touch, pal. I keep in touch, Collins. Uh, good to if you if you want to come on the podcast one night, let us know. We can maybe arrange that. Get you on the podcast. You don't need to say much. You can just button whenever you feel like buttoning that kind of thing but you're welcome on here if you want to come on collins that would be nice yeah that's it it's the the offers there if you want to come on um uh, just get, give john and myself a wee a wee message not a problem come on anytime you want pal absolutely thanks for that collins and uh he also said prayers for lisbon girls uh stepdad as well yeah yeah that's it yeah we'll all say the prayers for lisbon girls stepdad uh, hopefully he pulls through um, his personal health issues there, John. So good, good luck to Lisbon girls, stepdad as well. 
Aye, all the best of luck, Lisbon girl, like we said earlier. Uh, Yudif was up next. He says, I've had enough of Scotland. We have become a laughing stock again. Guys like Hanley, Souter, McLean, Morgan, Christie, Dykes, Porteous are not good enough to play at that level, but we don't have much to pick from. Anyway, good listen. Back to the Celtic soon. That's all that matters to me. Hail, hail. That's all that matters to you. All of us, to be honest with you, and there's a lot of people out there that love Scotland. I like Scotland myself, but my number one priority, John, is Celtic, and it always will be. Um, just a wee quick mention on Scotland. I think they're desperately missing Callum McGregor in there. Yeah, they could be missing Callum McGregor, but the rest of the team aren't that great anyway. I mean, like I said before, only Andy Robertson and John McGinn really get pass marks for me. The rest of them, I wouldn't have them anywhere near a Scotland team. Or just no yeah. international level players. Yeah, without Callum McGregor and Kieran Tierney, John, top world class players in that Scotland squad, they're struggling big time. Aye, uh, I would. But again, I was watching Portugal the other night. There, Portugal bring on a couple of world class substitutes, and we brought on Lewis Morgan. I was like, "What is this garbage, Lewis Morgan?" You know. Um, mm-hmm. That's the level we're at. Anyway, thanks for that, UD. Uh, I agree. Yeah. I agree Cheers, with what you said there. Yeah, yeah, good comment actually. Uh, one club since 1888 says prayers for Lisbon girl, hail, hail, roll on Saturday versus the Dons. Yeah, that's we're all thinking the same um, on both accounts. Uh, good luck to Lisbon girl and the big game. Not long to kick off. Aye, uh, thanks for that. And one, one club since 1888 and mad about football says the boys are back. Best of luck, Lisbon girl, to your stepdad. Yeah, the boys are back, aren't they? Yeah, and hopefully they come back with a a performance and a result, John. That's that's vital, a performance and a result. Um, but don't get me wrong, I would take a one nothing last minute on goal or penalty, something like that, John. Anyone, any of it. I know we say this quite a lot, John. We do, but especially against top of the league, Aberdeen, John. Any sort of win, any sort of three points in the bag, and I'll be very happy on Saturday night. I absolutely. That's what we all we all hope for. Do any kind of win at all. But of course, I'd rather take a six 0 But <laughs> I don't think we don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, thanks for that, Rosemary. Next up was James Doran. James says it's been almost forty years since Aberdeen won the league with Alex Ferguson. I remember play, uh, Aberdeen playing against Celtic when I was away. James, I remember watching Aberdeen at Celtic Park. Uh, anyway, I'll continue with. Since it's been almost 40 years since Aberdeen won the league with Alex Ferguson, but they might have to wait quite some time when Celtic are around winning trophy after trophy. Aye, uh, it's you know, Celtic's a different animal now for what they were 40 years ago, John. Celtic uh, and Aberdeen are a different team for what they were 40 years ago as well. Yeah, uh, okay, Aberdeen have had a great start and they could get a result against us on Saturday as well, but you know. Looking at the budgets for both clubs, um, you know, over a season, over a full season, there really should only be one winner to that title, to be honest with you. But uh, it's refreshing. I think it's refreshing to see Aberdeen, you know, five points clear Rangers as well. Remember, John, you know, sitting top of the league with Celtic. It's quite refreshing, I think. Uh, and, and it would me feel great if we get the three points um, against a high-flying Aberdeen t- team. Uh, it's all right when you're high flying, Xander, but you've got to keep that up for 12 months. Yeah, uh, that's to, it, yeah. No, 12, 10 months, whatever it is. Yeah. If Aberdeen got it in them to keep that up for 10 months, we'll wait and see. Other teams have tried it before. Hearts got close days a few seasons ago and then failed. Uh, I remember them getting after a great winning start and then it just collapsed. So, look, I don't want Aberdeen to collapse. I want it to keep challenging, but as long as we're beating them every time we play them, I'm happy. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's a. Uh, we can. I mean, what else can we say about Aberdeen? You know, we've given them all the the plaudits, we've given them all the praise, but that all stops on Saturday, John. So, uh, five o'clock come Saturday night, John. Uh, as long as we've won the game, um, I'll continue to wish Aberdeen all the best. I think it'll be a capacity crowd. It's going to be a rainy day, like you say. It's a nice, slick park. Celtic players are going to be up for that, Sander. That gets me more excited than any Scotland game. Yeah, yeah, the Scotland, Scotland stuff. I can take it, or leave it, John. I know, I know you're different. Um, I can take it, or leave it. So, 
Um, uh, it just it brings you down a wee bit when you see the team getting gubbed every, every time we play an international game. But uh, as you say, John, it's Celtic. That's that's the main thing. Uh, that's what the uh, the folks are on here to listen to is us talking about Celtic. Um, and uh, <laughs> this game, John, it's uh, it's it's big. You know, it's as big as any Glasgow derby, as far as I'm concerned, because. You know, to go three points clear of Aberdeen and eight points clear of Rangers as well. Remember, John, if we win on Saturday, with them still to go to Rugby Park to play a very tricky Kamarnock on that plastic pitch. Well, this is it, isn't it? It's the uh, it is a big game. As as a big big game, I think if Celtic win and Rangers lose at Kilmarnock, I think that's uh, the title decider. As long as Celtic don't rest on that, you know, knowing they're eight points clear and kind of take it easy. I've got to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. The only thing that matters to me is the league. And Kamarnock, they're a half-decent team. It's never an easy game going to Kamarnock. You know that. All Celtic fans know that. They beat us twice there last season. Um, so there's no reason why they can't go against Rangers and take points off of them, Sander. I can see it happening. No saying it will, but I can see it. Yeah, even as you said in your predictor, John, a draw, a draw would be ideal, to be honest with you. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's all coming up this weekend, folks. Uh, it's um, starting with the Celtic game at three o'clock. Uh, I still, still kind of believe it's no televised anywhere, John. To be honest with you, a massive game like that, nowhere near any television camera, John. And I, I'm shocked at that. Still shocked at that, to be honest with you. Aye. It is, it is weird, a big game like that, but uh, it's going to be a full house anyway at Celtic Park, so maybe that's uh, a good thing. It's no on the telly, it brings the fans out, doesn't it? <laughs> that's the only way I can look at that. You're more yeah. or less guaranteed 60,400 fans there, the motor, which is obviously the capacity of the stadium. So a full house, the motor. Yeah, full house, guaranteed, as you say, John. Guaranteed him. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> All right, John. Any more comments? No, that's it. Just another couple of well wishes for uh, Lisbon girls' stepdad from Rosemary, and obviously us. Yeah. Okay, John. Yeah. All the best uh, to Lisbon girls' uh, stepdad. All right, John. That's it. That wraps it up. Then that was interesting. It's um. I think we went on longer about Aberdeen game than we've ever done against um, any Glasgow derby. So that's how uh, much we've been looking forward to this one. Um, all right, if you've got any, any wee summing up, John, uh, let's have it. John, what's your final thoughts? I just think Celtic, the more... Uh, if if the, the Celtic that started the season turn up, it's going to be one-way traffic. It's going to be 4 5 nothing to Celtic. If uh, Celtic that turned up against Ross County turned up, although that was partially Ross County's fault for being good, <laughs> um, I think it's going to be a sticky game. Me personally, I think it is going to be a close game too, wasn't it, Celtic, I think. But uh, it also all depends on what Aberdeen turn up, Sander. If they play like they did against Hearts, they're going to get turned over comfortably by Celtic. And that's the Aberdeen I'm hoping turn up. So, hi. Uh, Whatever, the, whatever of the two teams turns up, it's going to be a good game. We're looking forward to this as much as any Glasgow derby match. I can't wait to watch it if it's if I can find it. Mm, yeah. All right, John. Okay, thanks for that. Thank you very much. Um, uh, that was interesting. Good to be chat. Enjoyed that. Uh, join us for the post-match, folks. Um, it'll either be Saturday or Sunday. We'll wait and see what happens. Um, can't confirm anything yet, but it'll either be Saturday or Sunday. For the post match, uh, get into the competition, folks, as well. Correct score and end time goal scorer one guess each into the comments. Good luck with that, everybody. The competition, a fantastic prize there. Um, from uh, Karen Murphy over on Facebook, the Celtic supporter Friday Mercury framed print out, folks. Framed, remember back to the, the, the frames. Uh, it's unusual, it's unique. There's only one available, uh, so get your entries, folks. Uh, and we'll catch you all for the post match after the Aberdeen game. Good luck to Celtic and hail, hail, John. Hail, hail, Zander. Catch you tomorrow. Catch you tomorrow.